This year, my DIY solar setup has saved me an average of $307 a month on my electric bill. So basically for 2025, that's gonna be over $3,600 once we get to the end of the year. You know, I'm just going by the average that I have so far, which is pretty awesome. And I didn't hire any installers. I built this whole system out myself over several years. Of course, I have changed some stuff here and there just from having a YouTube channel that's based around DIY solar and self-reliant. Did about 64 megawatts, I think, of power that I've created here at my house on my system so far. So if you ever wonder what real solar savings look like, if you do some DIY solar, we're gonna go ahead and break that down in this video. If you don't know me, my name is Rodney Hunt. You know, I do a little bit of DIY solar and self-reliance on this channel. And we also have a live stream that we do every week on Thursday on our Unplugged DIY channel. I'll leave that link below. So if you need questions answered live, you come to that, you put your questions in the stream and we try to answer everybody the best we can. We'll go ahead and jump into the system right quick and then jump into the numbers of what I've been making every month. Basically, I have a Grid Boss right now, a Flex Boss 18, and the eg4 12k pv so both of those hybrid inverters are going into the grid balls power my system i got uh quite a bit of solar going into those i think i have about 28 of the solar ever panels i think 12 of the hyundai 305 watt panels and then i have i think five or six panels on a little integra mount uh, that i got mounted on the ground and so that's another 1600 or whatever it is 1800 i can't remember exactly what those panel sizes are but basically between that system, let me go ahead and look at my numbers on my phone real quick so I'm not messing these numbers up. So right now I'm averaging making 2,564 kilowatt hours of power a month from my solar. And I also have a solar system here on my building, a smaller system. Basically I'm running with this 12K PV right back here behind me as you might be able to see. And I have some solar panels on the roof and then a little uh, solar pergola that I built. I'll leave that link below if you're interested in that. Very cheap, very inexpensive. I'm not telling people to build it that way. This is the way I did it. And basically with that 2,564 kilowatt hours I'm making a month, that's going to come out to be about $307.68 a month of savings for my electric bill. Everybody's going to be different based on your electric cost. But hey, DIY solar, you can definitely save some money. And I use a ton of power and all of my needs are still not covered. I got a couple electric vehicles. I have gas vehicles as well, but that's a whole nother story we can get into at any time you want to. But basically my, my electric bill is still not zero. I still use some grid power. Sometimes it might be, you know, 50, 60, 70, $80, $100. Sometimes it might be $150. It just depends on how much power I'm using. There's months I would use four or 5,000 kilowatt hours a month depending on how the weather is, you know, if it's really hot, really cold, the AC's running a lot, then I'm charging electric vehicles going back and forth to work. So, hey, I do use a lot of power and I do have a very large family compared to most people. So basically, just since I've had solar, I started out with basically 10 panels and I've just grown over time, but over several years of having it, I've basically made about 64 megawatts of power. And so I think it's gonna average out to be about 76, $7,700 of savings off my electric bill. And let's just imagine that you paid somewhere in the $25,000 range for this. You know, I'd have to go look up all the exact numbers of what the cost is now versus then. Let's just say you spend $25,000 to $30,000 on a system. Let's just say you're making what I'm making every month. Let's say your system costs $25,000. It's going to take you less than seven years to basically pay that system back. And it's going to be good a lot longer than that. Your lithium batteries, your electronics. You know, most of this stuff's gonna come with at least a 10 year warranty, but I'm thinking more in the 15 to 20 year range for most of it. You know, this stuff lasts a very long time. Even if you had to upgrade one part of that in that time, you're still gonna make your money back. And of course, most importantly to me is be more self-reliant. So if the power goes down for any reason, whether that be a hurricane, you know, some kind of storm, whatever, just uh, any kind of natural event, tornadoes, somebody destroys a power line and you're out for a couple of days flooding and all that kind of stuff you're still going to have power for you and your family but a lot of people of course the money is going to matter so you know you want to get down to the nuts and the bolts of it depending on what size system you buy in the five to ten year range for diy solar you can have it paid off and making money for you all depending on how much you spend and how big it is and how much power you're saving the more panels and the more batteries you have you know the better and more efficient your system is going to be because during cloudy days if you got more panels you're going to be able to bring in more power if you have more batteries when it is sunny you can charge your batteries back and then you're able to use them at night when most people are going to be home 
you might not be homeschooling kids like me and your house is running all day and the washing and dryer and everything else. So I'm using a lot of power during the day, but I'm using a lot at night as well. And I guess I forgot to talk about the batteries for anybody that hadn't seen the channel. I got about 100 kilowatts on my house system. Then I have about 48 kilowatts here on my building. So let's just say it's 150 uh, kilowatt hours of battery storage capacity. So I have a pretty good amount. And then I have a couple of EVs that I'm charging all the time. So if I really needed to, I could probably find a way to pull the power back out of those. You know, hook up to the 12 volt battery, turn the EV on and charge from a 12 volt battery to your system, you know, if you got a 48 volt system, just put a 48 volt charger and a 12 volt inverter, bam. It'll be a slow charge, but you could trickle charge like 10 kilowatts a night of power from your EV just from that if you don't have a plug built into it. Let's go ahead and talk about my highest month so far this year. I think I saved about $358 one month with the power that I created on site from my DIY solar system. So, you know, I might be an average of 307 throughout the year, but of course the winter's gonna be a little lower, the summer's gonna be a little higher. It hasn't been the greatest summer because I think we had about five weeks straight of rain here in North Carolina. So it was pretty much cloudy every day. So it wasn't great like it usually is for the, the June, July, August time frame. In there, we had quite a few weeks of rain. So, you know, not the greatest month, but you see, I still saved $350. I think that was June maybe. And so not bad for a DIY solar system. You gotta imagine the system I had, if you had to install or do it, they're probably gonna charge between 70 and $140,000, depending on where you're at. It's gonna be super ridiculous. It'll take you forever to pay something like that back. It's almost never worth it to, no, bottom line is, to me, it's never worth it to have an installer do it because most of them are just there to rip you off, get your money. They're not worried about what your electric bill is gonna be because you'll be making a payment on that stuff anyway. You're better off buying, you know, spending $10,000 and starting to build a system or $5,000. As long as you buy the right equipment that you can add on to over time, that's what I did. I started out with one inverter, one battery, and 10 solar panels. That's when I started with my main system to kind of try to run at least one thing in my house. So, you know, of course I had the little Harbor Freight stuff, 12 volt stuff and mess like that before. I'm not even counting that. And also this year with that $307 a month, you know, I started out with a 6,000 XP system, which wasn't the most efficient thing because I didn't have grid power going into it. So basically I would just turn part of my house off because I was kind of like back it in like a generator and I run half the house on grid and half the house on solar when I thought it wasn't gonna be a good day. So it's not the most efficient thing as possible. You wanna use all the battery and solar you can and then when you don't have a choice, you start using grid power when your batteries get down to whatever level you wanna drop it to. Whether it be 30%, 20%, 25, you know, just all personal preference. But now I have a new system with the grid boss which ties all that stuff in together. I have an EV charger on it, some smart ports. I got two hybrid inverters going into it that have my solar. And then I also have the grid coming in. So I can have grid assisting if my power ever goes over what my inverters will output. So it's just gonna be the most efficient it can be. And it's gonna charge your batteries when it needs to or when you ask it to, like if you think a storm is coming. So basically I'm gonna use the least amount of grid power as possible and save the most money as possible, which is always the point for people that are trying to save money when they're put doing DIY solar. So you might as well try to do it even if you're doing it for self-reliance like myself. So bottom line is you can save about $3,700 a month, probably spending it anywhere between that 20 and $30,000 on a solar setup, just depending on the deals you're able to find. I'm gonna say in the $25,000 to $30,000 range is what you're gonna have to do to save over $300 a month in solar. And it's all going to depend on your setup and where you're at and all that kind of stuff. I know somebody, people's in the Northeast and the Midwest where you're going to have snow during the winter covering your panels. That's just things you have to go over to figure out what you need. I would definitely put in more solar panels if I was in that situation and I'd put them in in a way that I could wipe the snow off or that it kind of melts off. And if you're interested in somebody's channel that is covering that kind of stuff, and they're doing it up in the Midwest. You can go check out Adam DeLay on YouTube. He's one of my co-hosts on our live stream. We do it every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the DIY Solar Unplugged uh, YouTube channel. So if you're interested in that and you got any questions about DIY Solar and Self-Reliance, hey, go check both of those out. And of course, Eric's channel as well from Home Energy Independence. And if you're interested in any of this equipment, 
that I've been using. I will have it all linked below. I get my stuff from Signature Solar a lot of times. That's where I'm getting my main equipment from. I have a discount code below in the description. If you're interested, you can get $50 off any order over $500. And then they have sales going on all the time. And they'll probably have some sales going on here for Black Friday coming up in the next month or so, whenever that happens. So if you're interested in that, go ahead, click the link below. It's an affiliate link. It will help out the channel. So if you found this information helpful and you are going to basically buy the stuff, it's not going to cost you any more. You can click on my links and it'll help me out. I'll make a small little commission and that helps me to make more videos and make more content and get that out to you. Hey, I appreciate you watching the video. If you found any of this helpful, hey, think about hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button, and thanks for watching.